Snello. Anyway, Windsor, New South Wales, Sydney, Australia. This is the new Windsor Bridge. And there's a high speed motorist. Couldn't have timed that one better, could I? He's sitting there with his hand on his chin. This is the main road in my Yowie Hunters video and this is the road that goes to Brisbane before they built the motorway from Sydney to Maitland. This bridge used to take all the traffic from Sydney to Brisbane. Yes, way back in 1978. So now they're going to bulldoze this down, knock it down, get rid of there's steel pylons down there. They're not concrete, they're steel casings. And that's the new one over there. And that little excavator's got to get up there out of the road. It's going to be a three-lane bridge. There's a YouTube because called the New Windsor Bridge over the Hawkesbury River. That's brought it by the New South Wales government. You're going to have a look at that. It's an animation. It's going to have three lanes. Right. Also, getting back to quickly, when we had the Sydney floods after the Sydney bushfires, and I talked about how this guy was jumping up and down like a peanut over the North Richmond Bridge going under, and I said, well, you know, so does the Windsor, and the floodwaters just barely went over this bridge. Now, this bridge is nothing compared to how, how high the floodwaters were back in 1961. And that was the year I was born because my mother was holding me in her arms on a shed at Riverstone, yeah, Riverstone, go look it up, it's near Windsor, out in the cow paddocks on top of a hay shed. Now, we all know how big a hay shed is, and she just passed me into the blokes in the boat, and as Mum got into the boat, they turned around and looked around, and the shed disappeared underneath a big swirl of water. So for that water to take underneath a hay shed at, Riverst at Riverstone, this is how high the flood water was. The flood water was up to the base of the awning of that shop, second floor up the hill, which is this house here, which my mother took a photograph of the flood water sitting underneath that awning. People were walking in water on that timber slats. Now, if you really want me to show you how low, how high that is, we're quickly going to walk up here because I don't have much memory on this phone. And there we go. So you can see me walking up a pretty fair grade of hill. Now there's my hand dead level. So that's a fair chunk, right? To, look, look at the concrete. You see that? Right, that's a grade. Look. So that's, now, have a look at this. See the top left-hand corner of the building? And look where the water level is. Now that water went as far out as there as the eye can see, which is that green, green hill, way over there in the distance. All that there was underwater. And people to this day still have no idea how much flood water was down here. Anyway, so that's where my mother stood and she took the photograph. She was on the corner of that building up there, right there. And she died in 1972. So that's where my mum once stood. And she said she took the photograph of all that underwater. And here, you and I would now be drowned. And yet, since they built the Warragamba Dam, can you see what I'm looking at? You see, they, they hang the power wires that high. Because they know now, because of the height of the Warragamba Dam, remember 61 flood was before Warragamba Dam opened, that's why those are there. And they're cable down there, you see? Because they know the dam doesn't come up, the, the water, flood water doesn't come up to that height. And that's why even out here in the farmer's paddocks, you see the boxes, the power boxes for the water pumps that pump the water out of the river are still 20, 30 feet higher 
they're the same height as this thing here. That's how much higher they're the river. So it's two metres, four metres, say six metres higher than the river. Anyway, we'll come back on the other side and we're going to have a look at down underneath the bridge. This is just another point. When I was a kid, with my mother driving the car, we used to come down here along the river road or whatever they call it here at Windsor and used to drive, drive down here past all these houses. Now there's the big tall house I was just at, I was just up there. This was the entrance road onto the Windsor River, onto the Hawkesbury River Bridge at Windsor. Can you see it? And we used to go down there, stop, this is how dangerous it was, stop with a horse float on the back and a truck would be coming down the hill and we had to turn, truck would be coming down that big hill and we had to turn left in front of it. A very narrow bridge and the council got wise and they blocked it off. Thank God they did. Okay people, now we're up here at the roundabout and we're about to go over the bridge. Now this is going to be a historical video because in about two months time this bridge is going to be gone. That's where we just were, just up there, right above that green grass there, right in front of us on the left. So there's a van, there's the two metre mileage marker, uh, depth marker, and now we're going over the old bridge. Hear that? Boom, 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 boom. And now we're going to go left into Macquarie Park, and I'll come back down to you at the bottom, of, down on the river, all right? So it won't be a minute, I'll come back to you. See, family restaurants, well, they're open. You come in here and have a meal, but you gotta keep your distances, all right? So, back in a sec, down by the water. Well, I did say back down by the water, but I didn't. Right, um, this is car park. That's where I just drove in. Now, this used to be, the road used to come in here, and if you look down here, you can see it. This used to be the road, right here. You can still see the lay of the tar, just right there is the lay of the tar. And, see? And this used to be the road straight through the swing set. And he used to come around there, and people could chuck a U-turn, then come back down. That was the shop for the caravan park. And that goes under water. And the water actually used to come up to the roof, I believe. Yeah, it was up the roof. That whole building, we could actually go under water. That's how deep this is. Remember, and that house over there, there's the old greenhouse, that goes under water too. I parked my bus in there one day. I, I don't know many of you first time to the channel, but I often talk about me living in a bus. Well, before they put this in and changed it, I parked in there one night. A little bit of rain come along, and uh, when I went to drive out, I just sat there spinning on the wet grass. And luckily, a guy come along with a four-wheel drive with a big bull bar, and he just gave me a little tiny push just to get traction. And once I, once I got the traction, I was off when I drove out there with me. With even the uh, lucky, I didn't have the trailer on. And then up there, I'm not trying to sound. I mean, that is the old shower block that has since knocked down, and they rebuilt a new one. There used to be a red brick shower block there, and go on Google Earth, you can see it. They now put these self-contained toilets in. We used to have, old red, used to have the showers in it. And there's the old barbecue warning there behind it, which has got the free electric barbecues. So if you ever come out here to Windsor, like that one over there, you've got free electric barbecues. And that's, got, that's quite common here in Australia. Right? So now we're going to go for a walk down here and have a look at the bridge. Yeah, and that's where I used to sleep in my bus too. It was up there past the toilets, next to the barbecue. And then that was not tarred all the way down to that bottom car park. That used to be dirt. Now they tarred it. And now they even mow. My goodness me. They actually mow right right out over there, right around the riverbank. And for a long time it was never ever mowed. And all the homeless people used to go and live out there. 
and this big bunch of trees and you can see that big bunch of trees over there where was my finger yeah those big bunch of trees over there people had their tents over there and this of course being a country town police didn't never used to worry about them out of sight out of mind they got a toilet they had water and they're out there and they didn't care and they just walk into here walk down there go down cross over the bridge and go into town back in a second we'll come back down there to the river oh there we go there's the old Windsor Bridge right next to the new Windsor Bridge let's have a look Now, you wonder how big those floodwaters were we had recently here at North Richmond and Windsor. Have a look at this. This is the riverbank. Hey. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to even bother going down there. Look at that. Did you see, look, right up there, the branches are snapped. Way up there, right where I'm pointing. So, imagine this is all underwater. That means that rest area over there, that was underwater as well. So here, we'd be drowned. <laughs> now, a little bit of a quick sad story. Want to see the bridge again? I'll give you another look. Right, back in 2001, my father ran away because he was dying of asbestosis and I was homeless living in my bus and I was 163 kilos. Now I've told a lot of people about this on my channel and I'm going to give you one example of where and how and how difficult it was to live. Now can you see this hill? Right, I'll come back to you right on the very hill. Well, this is the lower car park. There's our little white car down there. There's a new toilet block. All this is new under the state government. See, voting aspects, improvements, Macquarie Park, Freeman's Reach. Now, what they did not have here when I was here 20 years ago, when I was crippled, and I was 163 kilos, all this was not here, obviously. I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you where I was, where I got stuck. Well, here we are down on the water. So that's new, right? All that there's been built out. I brought my dog Mara Dog, the white Labrador. Everybody's seen a picture of her back on my channel. And I come down here at 163 kilos. And I forgot, because remember I said to people about my crippled legs and I'm going into surgery? This is what I'm talking about. See that? That's my muscle there. That should not be there. All that there is deformed. And I was 163 kilos. And I had to get up that hill. Let's have a go now. I got as far as here and I couldn't go any further. <laughs> and a razor blade's going through my legs. And my own family never cared. No one cared. And I was stuck down here. And this young guy come down here as a truck driver. And he walked down this track here. And now I'm quickly going to re redo it. And he pushed me. And there was none of these steps. You've got to remember that. This is 2001. And he pushed me up here. And this is where I had to go. 163 kilos. 300 and something pounds. And look at the grade of this hill. And I was screaming. Ah, 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 ah. And my legs were pinned straight. I could not bend my legs. And now, look what I just did. I walked up the hill. I feel like Sylvester Stallone. You know, yeah, that's how I feel like Sylvester Stallone. So there you go. 
that's the hill a guy had to push me on my big fat bum and get me up the hill and you can hear me panting and my bus was up there so what he did I, he drove very slowly and I I couldn't even get in his truck I hung on I hung on to his rear bumper bar and he towed me from there and I was so much pain and he crawled up there about two kilometers an hour not even that to got me up there to my bus and I lied in that bed there for three days in agony and you know the most sickening part of it was it was my personal doctor who's now passed away Dr Stuart Summers at King's Cross back in the day when I had my two car accidents because both that legs were injured identically he said go home to your bus use the handrails hang your legs up and keep them straight now what the accident was is that I had my foot on the brake stopped at a set of lights and you know that position and the car went bang up my rear end and the brake pedal pushed up and exploded the fascia in my lower legs and then four days later I had my birthday on the 22nd of January and then on the 28th of January another car well I stopped at uh, Military Road in Spofford Street at Mossman driving a cab again and had my left foot on the brake bang hit up the arse end again stopped at a set of lights at, at Military Road in Spofford Street and the first one was on the corner of Crown and Goulburn Street in Sydney back in 1997 when it was a one way street and you think oh why don't I get crippled straight away no, it didn't work like that because when the doctor told me to go home and put my legs up, hang them up, 20 years later, when I talked to Dr. Dave, um, Anthony Grabs, Anthony Grabs said to me, uh, A. Anthony Grabs, G R A B B S, he's at St. Vincent Hospital in Sydney, he told me that was the worst thing I could have done. He said, if I had any medical knowledge, he said what I should have been doing every day was doing this bending my legs so if you ever get hit up the rear end by a car with your foot on the brake you make your loved one or someone bend your leg maximum regularly every day twice a day for at least 12 months because that's how long it took and my muscles grew through the broken membrane fascia and glued themselves onto the bone and yes that's why I said I was screaming in agony because my legs were not bending they were like this I think you can see what I'm trying to show you I used to walk like that and that's how I used to walk if you call it walking so if you enjoyed this remember you hit up the rear end while stop the satellites with your foot on the brake fasci on the leg muscles and keep bending them twice a day for a whole year because I lost the use of my legs for 20 years I've only been walking there for three years and this is 2020 and that was back in 1997 so I'm not full of shit. You can see the scars. You want to see them again? Have a look. Here we go. I'll shrink the picture down. There's the first car. And then one, two, three, four, five. Right up to there. And that there is my leg muscle. See that? That is going down there that's where that's got to go that's going to come back over and get pushed back into the hole and that's why I can't walk and this old leg over here here you go have a good look see that one there reset properly 
So he's tucks in here, pulls in there, and there's the scar right there. And the first one was down here. And I, and I got one operation every two years because those muscles died. By the time they got around to doing them, 10 years later, those leg muscles died. They went from being that to less than that. And I had to build them up. And they had to build them up in stages and went like that, they went nuggety. And then it went like a stick and they built it up again and they freed up the next bit. Built them up like bricks. You'd have a brick with a toothpick. They had to build that toothpick back up the size of a brick. And then the next one was the toothpick and build that up again. You couldn't do the whole lot at once because it's too wobbly. There'd be no way for the body to have any sort of you understand what I'm trying to say? Right. You know what I'm trying to say. The muscle needs something to pull on. And if the, and that muscle was so badly stretched, it had nothing to pull on. So therefore then that muscle would not regenerate. So there you go. So I'm a fighter. Always will be a fighter. you got to be a fighter. And we're in this horrible situation. So that's the road they're going out to Wilberforce. Ah, sorry, Freeman's Reach. And that's the road they're going to Wilberforce. We're in this horrible situation all around the world with the, with the thing. But look, people are still going out, just keeping your distances. See, the swings are blocked off. And there goes another dickhead. Oh, don't you love them. Anyway, from me, Mr. Hominoid, thumbs up. God bless. Take care. And uh, hope you enjoyed that. You learned something a bit of my tragedy in my life. Down there, parked in the bus, went down the hill, got stuck on the riverbank. I sat there for three hours till this guy showed up. I couldn't get up the hill. Even the dog couldn't get me up the hill. He had to physically put his hands on my ass, my big ass. And I think, go back in my videos. How big was a hominoid? How big is it? How big was a hominoid? Go and look how big it was. And you try and picture me walking up that hill. How big is a hominoid? Go back down to my channel. Have a look at the have a look at the video. You see how big my backside was. And that was that was a couple of years after that photograph was taken. My legs even got bigger and straight. Sorry, not bigger, but more stiffer. So you, anyway, past is the past. Move on. Let's be happy. We've got this virus to take care of. Be safe. Take care. Love and look after your friends. Hand gels. Practice safe sex. Drink responsibly. Well, you can't gamble at the moment because all the pubs and clubs are locked down. So even online gambling. Oh, you can on online gamble. So gamble responsibly and look after yourself. And from Mr. Hominoid here at Windsor, New South Wales, in Australia, down under. Thumbs up, give me a like and subscribe. Leave me a comment. If anybody wants some of those keychains of kangaroos and koala bears and Sydney Opera House, Sydney Harbour Bridge, or anything to do with Sydney keychains, give me, give me, give me a yell. Give me a comment and uh, give me a call on M Hominoid, M Hominoid on Facebook. So from down under, g'day mate, see you later.